Hey everyone, it is uh, excellent to be with you again and uh, we've obviously entered another lockdown period and it truly does feel like, to me at least, that community has been taken away from us somewhat. I was absolutely loving being together as a church and across our different sites, so many were enjoying that as well. So there's a real sense of loss at the moment. I'm sort of feeling there's something missing in our lives without being able to connect in these groups that we've been having in these sites. But I'm so uh, confident and I just know that we are held together as Christ followers by Christ. We have a common unity with Christ. And I'm so grateful for technology like this. I'm so grateful for technology with WhatsApps and uh, videos to watch and being able to communicate through that as a mechanism. It means we can connect while we're apart and it means that we can, we can do things we wouldn't be able to do 100 years ago, 200 years ago and I want to encourage you let's use our our tech for the right things let's use it to encourage each other let's use it to spread healthy stuff rather than uh, you know the next um, terrible news about uh, vaccine or COVID or, or these sorts of things and panic sharing let's share things that encourage let's share things that point people to Christ to build friendship and where you feel comfortable Let's, let's still meet face to face. Yes, take precautions, but, but let's do that. Let's continue in building and growing friendship during this lockdown again for however long it lasts. Now today, the 4th of July, the USA celebrates Independence Day. It's the day, the same day in 1776, where the American people uh, had independence from British rule. And whilst independence of this kind may be a good thing, and there's different great stories of nations coming to independence and, uh, and, and really flourishing, there's also terrible stories on the back of it as well. But whilst independence of this kind is, is quite a good thing, in many respects, independence in every type is praised in the world, and that's where it gets dangerous. Songs like I Did It My Way by Frank Sinatra sort of the anthem of the day, the anthem of the times in which we live. If you've made it on your own and without any help, if you uh, have the skills and you have the ability, you've been your own man, your own woman, you've overcome amazing obstacles on your own, you are most praised. You're the ones most looked up to. Sarah and I uh, love uh, cooking uh, and watching cooking shows. We love watching Australian MasterChef in particular. And we were quite shocked. The most recent winner, so this would be last year's winner, um, was, was just, in our sense, hugely arrogant in how she spoke. So sort of every time she was asked off, she had won uh, one of the days or won one of the competitions of it, she would sort of be like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just amazing. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just incredible. And they would say, well, this dish is amazing. And she would just say, yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm just amazing. And the, the judges were going like, this woman is just incredible. I mean, she is just, she, she is just astounding. And uh, I, I sort of sat there rather confused going, to me, aren't you guys slightly awful? put by by this person just sharing with the world how absolutely incredible she felt she was I thought doesn't this grate you guys the wrong way but it didn't it was massively praised it was praised by everyone it's praised by the judges and the contestants it was like this lady's made it and it's almost right for her to be to be really out there and proud about what she's done you see humility and reliance are not considered virtues for many in our modern era. I was really surprised if we go back a few years and I used to do these mission trips to different schools around Harare, around Zimbabwe. And quite often we'd get to chatting to who do you look up to? And so I would be sitting there saying, great guys, tell me, tell me who, you, who you look up to in the world. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, it's obviously going to be people like Nelson Mandela and Mother Teresa and sort of Martin Luther King and these other people who in past or who I look up to. And guys would be like, no, 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 no. I mean, those guys were, were, were sort of a bit soft. I mean, they didn't really stand up. They didn't really own it. You know, no, we, we look up to people like Hussein Bolt and we look up to those who, who are really just out there and, and braggadocious, for lack of another word, about their abilities and what they've managed to do. The thing is, when it comes to our relationship with God, we have to have the opposite of independence. We need dependence. And so my preach today, I'm titling it Dependence Day. 
And I trust this is not going to be a one day event for you and I, but it's going to be a lifetime of living dependence day after dependence day after dependence day when it comes to our life with Christ. You see, we have to be dependent on Christ. And so I'm going to look at three simple points. It's going to be, why do we need to be dependent on Christ? What does being dependent on Christ look like? And how can we grow in our dependence on Christ? So firstly, why do we need to be dependent rather than independent? Why do we need to live and operate different to how society wants us to live, uh, doing it on our own? Why do we need to live opposite to that? And why do we need to be dependent rather than independent? Well, firstly, you and I, cannot have a relationship with Christ by being independent. I want that to really sink in. You and I cannot have a relationship with Christ by being independent. Uh, Colossians 2 verse 13 to 14. I'll, I'll read this briefly. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. And then a bit further, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, it says, For our sake he, this is God, made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, he was perfect, to become sin for us, so that in him we might become right with God. What are these two passages saying? Well, they're saying very clearly, dead people cannot make themselves alive on their own. If you're dead, you're dead, and something outside of yourself has to make you alive. You can't do it on your own. In the same way, spiritually dead people cannot become spiritually alive on their own by living independently. It is impossible. The only way this happens is as it's shared in those passages when we receive God's free gift of forgiveness which he purchased for us on the cross. The perfect God dying for you and I. There is no other way to have a relationship with Christ but for depending on what he has done not on what we do. That's the difference between grace and works is our dependence is on Christ and not our own. So why do we need to be dependent rather than independent? Well, firstly, it is impossible to have a relationship with Christ any other way. Secondly, we can't enter God's kingdom now and for all eternity by being independent. We cannot live in God's kingdom on earth as his ambassadors, as part of his family, by being independent and we can't live with him for all eternity as well. This is a follow on from point one. In John three, verse four to five, he's talking to a man who doesn't know him and is really wanting to know him. And this is what he says to this man called Nicodemus, John three, verse four to five. He says, um, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? This is because Jesus said, Nicodemus, uh, if you want to know me, if you want to be part of the family, you need to be born again. And this is obviously fairly strange words to use. And so Nicodemus asks a logical thing and he says, so what do you mean? We can't get back into our mom's womb and be born again. And Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what's he saying? He's saying, unless you are born into life with Christ, unless you are made a new creation, it's impossible to, for you to live in his kingdom. And that means that if you aren't born into him in the spirit, once we die, it's one of two places we go, heaven if we know Christ, hell if we don't. So if we live dependent, heaven, if we live independent, hell. And what he's saying to Nicodemus is he's saying, the only way for this to happen is if you depend on me, if you're born again by me. Second one. Third one, we cannot do what God has called us to do. In this life that we have on earth, it's impossible for us to live out the life God's called us to by being independent. John 15 verse 5, it says here, we cannot do, um, sorry, I was reading again the point. John 15 verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Isn't that pretty scary? Jesus is saying, apart from me, 
you can't do anything. Is he meaning that we can't get up and go to work and live life? No, many people do that. He's saying, apart from me, you can't do anything you're supposed to be doing as a Christ follower, what you were created for. Apart from me, none of what you do has any impact. Apart from me living within you and me operating within you and leading and directing you, nothing that you do has any purpose when it comes to Christ. That's huge. I want my life to matter. I want your life to matter now and for all eternity. And that will only happen if we are dependent on Christ. So that's a little bit about why do we need to be independent versus dependent. It, uh, uh, um, dependent versus independent. It affects everything. Second one, what does dependence actually look like? What does that look like for you and I? Does it mean that we're people who sort of can't do anything on our own? We're kind of robots who can't think for ourselves. Um, are we people who rely on others for everything? And we're, we're just sort of these weak people who need people to help us out. Do we stand up uh, for what's right or do we sort of shrink back in fear? Are we, are we these kind of softies? Is that what it's talking about when, when we talk about dependence on Christ? Not at all. This is what it looks like. Firstly, it means confidence in God's plan for your life. Confidence in God's plan for your life. Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, uh, this is Paul writing to the Philippian church. Um, he's just shared about um, how he prays for them, how he cares for them. And uh, then he goes on and he says, I'm sure of this, that he, this being God, who began a good work in you, will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. He's saying, you can be confident if you're a Christ follower, you can be absolutely confident that God worked in you to bring you to a relationship with him and he's gonna continue working through your whole life on earth and he's gonna complete everything he set out to do in your life as a Christ follower. That brings amazing confidence. So dependence, what does it look like? It means confidence in God. You're a person of security. You're a person who's, who's centered, who's grounded, who's not swayed by the waves and by situations. You're secure, you're at peace because you have purpose in God and you have trust that He is working in your life because you're dependent on Him. So, so we as Christ followers, if we're depending on Christ, we should, be, we should look to the rest of the world. No matter what situations are happening, we're at peace, we're grounded, we're confident not in ourselves but in Christ. Secondly, what does dependence look like? It looks like a passion to be like Christ and follow Christ no matter what. So, so dependence on Christ means that He is our focus. It means that we're after what He's after. It means that He is our passion. He is our pursuit. Galatians 2 verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh... The life I live as a person going about my everyday life, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul's saying, it's not that I'm a robot, but basically God has taken over my desire, my desires. He's taken over my heart. In a sense, he's, he's taken over my body. So, so, so as I live, I want you to see that, it, that, that it's, it's really Christ. I want my life to look so similar to Christ that in a sense, as Paul, you can look to me and almost see Christ. That's why other passages in the Bible, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He was saying to people, listen, I'm so passionate about Jesus that you should see Jesus in me. So, so I hope that you see a great example in me. So dependence on Christ looks like us being absolutely dedicated and focused and passionate about Jesus and about his kingdom. He's the one we want to be like. He's the one who we draw strength from. He's the one who changes us from the inside out. It's about him and not us. And we rely on Him rather than our abilities and gifts that we know comes from Him anyway. So, so there's no room for arrogance or pride in our lives because we realize that by being born, we didn't choose the gifts and abilities we have. We didn't choose our looks or anything. That, that came from God. And so we, we have this real humility about us because we know that everything we have is from Him anyway. What else does dependence on Christ look like? Well, to be honest... It may look a bit like weakness in society's eyes, but in the spiritual realm, it's powerful. It may look like weakness in the eyes of much of society and how we speak and how we say and how we respond to things, but actually in the spiritual realm, it's powerful. 
1 Corinthians 2. And I, this is Paul talking, when I came to you, he, he went and he visited the church in Corinth and spent time with the people there. He said, when I came to you, brothers, um, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech and wisdom. He's saying, I, I didn't have fancy words. I, I wasn't super quick with the tongue. I wasn't great at debating. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. This is Paul. He, he suffered greatly for God. He wrote most of, of New Testament scripture, but he, he, he wasn't this out there super strong guy. In fact, he shares so often about um, his fear of certain, certain things. And here he says, trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom. He wasn't some highly educated, although frankly, you read a lot of his stuff and he had some serious wisdom from God. But he's coming across saying, this, this wasn't me. This is what, what it, it wasn't about this. But in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men but in the power of God so he's sharing and uh, he's saying you know one of the things that dependence on Christ looks like is a dependence on his power rather than our intellect and as a result it looks like God's kingdom coming it looks like power coming. It looks like the things in the kingdom of heaven, how we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. It looks like us relying on his power to see people healed, to see situations changed, to see God come through rather than our own understanding and our own wisdom. So that's what it also looks like. What else? What is dependence on Christ like? It has an eternal focus to it because that is home forever. Jesus said in Matthew 6 verse 19 to 21, he said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth, moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So dependence on Christ looks very much like a focus on the world that's to come and that affects how we live on earth. We place our time and our resources and our energy towards building towards that day that's forever rather than the short temporary nature of this lifetime. So that, that in our lives, that, that shows a little bit about what dependence looks like. We carry on with everyday life. We use the giftings God's given us. We have marriages and families and work and holidays and, and life, but it's characterized by those different areas that I shared. But as we go into the last point, um, how can we grow in dependence? How can you and I grow in this dependence on Christ rather than independence? How can we grow in that area? Firstly, if you're listening here today and you don't know Christ, the only way that you can grow in dependence is by firstly becoming dependent and that's giving your life to Christ. I want you to know that Jesus is the way He's not a way. He is the truth, not a truth. He is the life. There is no other way to the Father except through Him. And that's your starting point. So if you've never given your life to Christ, if you've never handed over your life to Christ, if you've been trying to do it on your own, being independent, I want you to know that it's as simple as you turning and saying, Jesus, I need you. I need you to save me from my sin. I need you to make me alive even though I'm dead spiritually. I need you to transform me. And He'll do it. So that's the first step. Give your life to Christ. The second one is to spend time with him. I love this example of Christ. He was on earth. He was obviously walking with God all the time because he was God. But look at the example he set to us. Mark 1 verse 35. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he, Jesus, departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. What did Jesus do in the morning? He set an example for us and he said, hey, it's, it's time with my father. It's spending time with Christ. So what's the greatest way that we grow in dependency? Well, it may seem absolutely ob obvious, but how often do we struggle with regular time with the Lord? How often do you struggle with regular time with the Lord, with, with a time each day that's special, just you and Him, with a time uh, where, you, where you're focused and you're listening for His voice as you go throughout your day? I want to encourage you to make that a habit. There's the YouVersion app, which has some brilliant Bible reading plans. Maybe you decide to, to read a verse um, each day, just one verse. Maybe you sit quietly and you make notes before the Lord. You ask Him to speak to you. But, but let's make this a habit. The greatest way that we grow is time with the one who helps us grow. 
And so um, I think it's something that I struggle with, that many of us struggle with, but the ultimate way to grow in dependence on Christ and to live for Him is time with Him. So if it's not a habit in your life, no matter how small, I wanna encourage you to start today. And we'll be posting in the days ahead some different reading plans that you could get stuck into. Thirdly, it's to constantly allow the Lord to work on your life and on your character. I love this passage from 1 Thessalonians 5. It says, See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, and abstain from every every form of evil kind of has this collective grouping of working on our hearts, working on our character and constantly assessing, saying, am I living for good? Am I living for evil? Is there part of my heart that's not open towards God? And so this is something that we can constantly do, constantly depend on God and say, God, show me if there's anything in my life that doesn't honor you, that isn't pleasing to you. And we can work on that. Fourthly, just two more. We learn about what our giftings are and allow God to use us through them. It's how we grow. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 6. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them in everyone. So I want to challenge you to take time to say, uh, Lord, what, what are the giftings that you've given me? What are my passions? What are my desires? Where, where, where am I used by you most often? and to live through those areas, to live in that sweet spot of faith, to allow Him to use you, to use the gifts He's given you, maybe not the ones you think you have, the ones you actually have, and start to live in those areas. Finally, number five is to spend time with people who are passionate about Christ. Hebrews 10, verse 23 to 25, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. What I was saying that we can do one-on-one or through messages, we can encourage and stir each other up to live for Christ. Not neglecting meeting together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We can't grow in isolation. We need others who are also pursuing Christ to help us grow together. So it doesn't mean that we stop spending time with people who don't know Christ. Of course, we have to. How else will people know Christ? But it means that we have to regularly be spending time with people who push us on, who help us, who encourage us to grow, to be more like Christ. That's how we grow in dependence on Him. So that's my prayer for us at Harvest, that we would be a dependent people, that as America is celebrating Independence Day today, we would be as Christ followers celebrating Dependence Day, and that each day we would be dependent on Christ. It's the greatest way to grow. It's the greatest way to experience the life that He's called us to, to be a reliant people, to be a humble people, to be a dependent people. So I want to pray for us right now that God would help us in that process. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you that you're here with us right now. Thank you that you've been challenging us. Thank you that you have been instructing us. And Holy Spirit, in the way that only you can do it, I pray that you would touch hearts as we're listening right now, as we're connected in small groups, as we're we're watching online. I pray that you would show us those different areas. I I pray that you would show us whether we know you or not today and we would give our lives to you. I pray that you would show us areas of our lives where we're not depending on you, where we've been caught in by what society says. We've been trying to do it in our own strength and you say, actually, the way to live life is to be dependent on me. Father, I pray that we would grow in those areas so that society, that our friends, that the marketplace truly see that we're passionate about you, that we're dependent on you, that we're following you. I pray that we would grow in spending time with you one-on-one, that we would, we would long and love times with you one-on-one each day, that we would listen for your voice throughout the day, that we would be people who are salty, people who are light in a dark world. I pray that you would use us in this week ahead. I pray that you would challenge us, challenge areas of our hearts that, areas of our hearts that aren't in line with you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would make us more like yourself each and every day. In your powerful, amazing, wonderful name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us for the service. Um, and that's what I'm praying for you. I'm praying for Dependence Day for, for you today in your life as a Christ follower and going on as well. If you need any help, if you need any support, if you need someone to pray with you as an office, we're here for you. We're available for you as a team. And we're, we're still so excited about God's kingdom that's advancing through harvest. We can't wait to see what he has in store for us. There's no doubt none of this is happening by, by accident. God's used this time to, to, to draw us closer, to shake up the models of church, to, to, to really get us down to what matters most to assess and think about our personal faith and uh, we, we just look forward to what he's doing in the weeks and months ahead so I pray that you have a great day and look forward to being in comms with you soon cheers for now